Well, hello and welcome to Straight Talk on Mining, the webcast series. I may be making forward statements, so be forewarned. We move on to module number five, and this is a piece of high grade from the Sleeper Mine in Nevada. Now, uh, the Sleeper, the site has been reactivated. I'm not sure if it's being mined again today, but when it was first discovered and mined, uh, it was super, super high grade. And actually, the bands that are here, in here are gold. Gold. Isn't that beautiful stuff? This is a beautiful, beautiful sample. And in fact, this mine was so rich that people in the open pit were instructed never to bend over and pick up a rock. And there were people who were patrolling, guards patrolling the mine with automatic weapons to stop people from robbing the surface, to stop the miners themselves from picking up the rock and throwing it in their lunch boxes. How this escaped. <laughs> escaped the mill, I don't know, and um, I don't want to know. It's not my business, but here it is, beautiful thing. So again, very important to understand where you are in epithermal systems, both horizontally in the horizontal sense and in the vertical sense, right? And what you want to be in, of course, is the goody zone, the gold zone here. So up at the surface, you will have hot springs, these form underneath the hot springs, as I've said, and you will have a silica terrace and veining up here, but the vein will have virtually nothing in it, like that sample just I showed you from the Eureka vein. But down here, this is the boiling zone. And this is around 200 degrees centigrade to about 250, maybe even a little bit higher. And this is the area where the fluids boiled. And when they boil, the fluids become destabilized. They can no longer carry gold and silver as dissolved in solution, and it drops out, and it, it drops out in the veins. Uh, you can have um, meteoric groundwater convecting, as I, I talked about before, but you can also have, and this is very important, a magmatic input. We think essentially this is where a lot of the gold comes from down here from the magma body, which is degassing. So there's fluids and there's gases that are coming off this thing at around one to two kilometers depth. And then the vein itself is forming around a kilometer down. Again, epithermal means cl close to the surface. So it's very important that you're in here. If you're down in this area, you're gonna be in the base metal zone. If you're up in this area, you're gonna be in the barren zone not barren as in Keith Barron, but barren as in no gold. So it's important to understand where you are vertically in the system. So I'm going to, I've got some, some shots here from vacation shots from Yellowstone National Park. And this is a, a geyser area in the north part of the park. And you can see lots and lots of steam coming out of the ground and kind of a low structure here. This is the silica terrace. This is what we see at the surface. Now, a lot of these hot springs are um, surrounded by these kind of nodular things. These are actually forming very much like stalactites and stalagmites form, but these are made out of silica, these little knobs. And basically the fluid, the, the water, the hot water here is charged with silica, dissolved silica, and it's splashing out and is forming these things. It almost looks like a coral reef or something like that, but it's all made out of silica. And this is the, the, the silica that, that's coming out of solution. At depth, this is going to form quartz veins. On the surface, it forms silica terraces. Now, this is from the Yaoi prospect of Orania's. And you can see these very, very cur curious uh, structures through here. And this is all solid, solid silica. And you can see these kind of round holes in here. What the hell is this thing? Well, here's another sample from uh, the same place. And that was in interpreted by Jeff Hedenquist, who is a, a world authority on epithermal deposits to be reed stems in the growth position. They're all facing upwards, the, fame, the same uh, direction. And these things were in the splash zone. And if you can think about it, they're in the splash zone and they got entombed by silica. 
and so and essentially fossilized. And here they are uh, preserved for all time. Uh, this is the Echina Spring in Yellowstone National Park. You see this orange scum around it. This is actually very, very rich in arsenic and antimony, and these are pathfinder elements for gold. In fact, Yellowstone has gold deposits all the way around it. You cannot prospect for gold in the park itself today uh, because if you do, you're going to have the park rangers coming down on you uh, as fast as, uh, well, <laughs> it's very, very illegal. Um, but there are gold deposits that have been found historically going right back to the 1860s all the way around the park. Uh, there was one uh, deposit that uh, came close to actually being developed uh, called the New World, uh, but it was shut down by environmentalists, and probably rightly so. So it never uh, became a gold mine. But uh, again, this is great, great natural laboratory to see how gold deposits form. This is an extinct hot spring called Soda Butte. And you can see lots and lots of horizontal lines in here. And you can go back to that drill core that I showed you from Fruta del Norte. It's very, very similar. Same sort of stuff. Fruta del Norte, of course, is Jurassic in age. It's about 151 million years old. And this stuff is, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 years old. Not very old at all. Here's another siliceous center. This is actually from Hokkaido Island, the most northerly island in Japan. And this is property Irving Resources. And it, it, it's solid silica block. And again, you can see the horizontal banding through here. So I talked about um, being where you are vertically in, in that sense. But horizontally, it's important to know where uh, your gold and silver is going to be under the ground. And look at this. This is a silica terrace that extends way off into the distance several kilometers. Where the hell are you going to put a drill hole here and have uh, have success? Here's the hot spring right here in the in the in the front, and the hot water is coming out of the ground, and then it's spilling over the side, and you get silica, silica, silica everywhere. And this is all uh, undoubtedly enriched in things like arsenic, antimony, and mercury, per, um, which would be a big geochemical anomaly. Now, just to give you a little bit of um, uh, scope uh, for size. This is the Northern Geyser Basin here in uh, Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone uh, Lake, all these blue things are actually, uh, uh, these are silica deposits underneath the water in the lake. And then all these green things and orange things are the active or extinct hot springs going all through here. And this is 10 kilometers in scale. This is Arania's property, and that is 12 kilometers from there to there. It's at the same scale as the thing above. And you can see it's covering a huge, huge area. This is what's called a, a, a mega volcano, a mega caldera on the top of a very, very large volcanic site, probably what you had uh, back in the Jurassic, uh, the time of the dinosaurs at, uh, in Ecuador was a similar sort of thing, generating all these things. So tons and tons of things that need to get investigated. Of course, nobody's gonna do any drilling in here for gold, but we're sure as hell doing a lot of drilling here in this part of the world down in Ecuador on our concessions. This is, uh, potentially what Arania's epithermal field would have looked like back in the Jurassic with a whole bunch of shallow lakes and then uh, lots and lots of geysers and hot springs being generated by a big magma body at depth. That's this red stuff, molten rock underlying the whole thing. And this is essentially what's happening at Yellowstone today. So here's our pilgrim yet again. And here he is frying his boots. Uh, this is long before Charlie Chaplin uh, roasted his boots in the gold rush, which is one of my absolute favorite uh, movie moments. <laughs> it's a great thing. Uh, go and rent it if you can, or, or find it on the internet. Once more returned to close of day to a cheerless, dismal home. He vows if he was back in Maine, 
he never more would roam. His hunger makes his bowels yearn for yams or Irish roots, potatoes. But these he looks in vain to find, then tries to fry his boots. Poor soul. Gosh, what's going to happen to him? Well, stay tuned.